Alright, you guys are good. You guys can come on in. We're just gonna go right in the back. Straight back into in here. As you guys can see, we have some work to do. Now this is a young shepherd, so I don't know why it's this bad this early, but we're gonna get to the bottom of it right now. You guys like my dog hair? Brendan, yeah. nice to meet you. You just turned one? Yes. Okay. Um, and so she's reactive to all dogs or just dogs on leash or explain to me what the reactivity is like. She can approach dogs and say hi, she's okay. Um, and she plays ball with dogs and daycare and whatever. And that's when she's on a leash. And she also has started being coming reactive to All right, um, I'm gonna, gonna go grab some stuff. So right now you have her just on the, the, har the, the easy walk kind of thing. Is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna grab you a slip collar, and I'm gonna grab you a couple chairs, and I'm gonna grab you a, a training leash, and then we're gonna get started. Okay. Sound good? What you think? So Pepper's pretty good with people though, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah never, never any people issues. So okay. this is very basic. So what this does is it allows us to apply pressure to the dog um, where it matters, which is going to be the head. If you can control the head, like my body isn't gonna separate and go forward if my head goes this way, right? So if you can control the head of the animal, you'll be able to really maneuver and navigate the dog uh, a lot better than if, if you were to just take the core of the dog's chest. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna put this slip on really quick. So as far as like obedience and stuff goes, uh, what does she know right now? She knows a lot of the basics, so sit down. Heel? Uh, like yeah. what? <laughs> She's been to, um, we've taken her through like three sessions of uh, basic stuff. We did like puppy kindergarten and then we did manners one and manners two. If you were to ask her to heal in an environment with another dog within the vicinity, would she? No, no. Okay. <laughs> would she do it? No. Okay. She won't do anything when there's another Right. Dog. So that's all I really care about is, is if, I can, if I can get a dog to do the things that I want them to do without distraction, that's good because I know that they can do it, but if they don't do it when we need it to happen, then it's kind of useless. And it's frustrating because you're saying, hey, do this, and the dog's like, okay, I know what you want me to do, but I'm not gonna do it. So every time you ask your dog to do something that they know and they decide to, to, to say, I, I would rather not, then you're taking a step backwards, you know, because you're like, hey, do this. She's like, nope. And not only am I not going to do it, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. Heel, sit, right? At the end of the day, if you ask yourself, well, why not? If your dog is gonna ask themselves why not, or you're gonna ask yourself why not, that's kind of like the dictator of, will your dog do something or not? Which means if you come into the door, she goes crazy, why wouldn't she? Do you know what I mean? So if if she's barking at a dog there and she's barking at a dog there, you have to do the point of view from the dog and say, why not? I mean, obviously we're gonna say, well, because it's, it's rude and we don't like it, obviously. But for her, you have to like, go to the point of view from the dog and say, why wouldn't I do that? She's a shepherd. Shepherd's naturally vocal. Um, they're like that a lot of times. So that is, that bark is more of, I don't really, because there's not a dog, right? That's more of like, I don't really know what to do. So it's not, it's not necessarily dog reactivity. I'm, I'm probably looking at this more about the dog's, the dog's point of view is I don't know what to do. So I'm just gonna play with her a little bit, hey, just to get her engaged with me. So if you guys watch really close, you'll see that quick little snap I did I with the prong collar has taught Pepper exactly what I wanted her to do. Good girl. Good. Good heel. I, I can just tell by the way that she's treating me 
that she was trained primarily with food in the beginning because if there's not motivation for her, she's not going to adapt to me at all. Which is, I want to say is halfway normal for, for the majority of dogs. Hey, if you don't have anything I like, I'm going to ignore you. But at the same time, like it's also a development that, that dogs get. I just want to see how she acts if I get some of these out. Yeah, she'll, she'll heal all day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, sit. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is like, like I said, it is a frustrating thing because I use food all the time, but I don't use it to, I use it for, right. I use it for imprinting. Like if I want a dog to go through a certain thing, like if I want them to sit and they've never sat, if I want them to heal and they've never healed, and I'll show you what that looks like for me. Like if this particular dog had never learned heal, the way that I would do food, and I would add it in to try to lure the dog into the position, uh, like good heel, good heel, good. And then same thing, I'd lure the dog's head up into a sit and I'd mark it, yes, good sit. After three days, the food would decrease significantly, right? Now we're at a point where, and all dogs, I shouldn't say that, but the majority of dogs that are developed that way turn out similarly um, because now we need that food for the behaviors. So it's really just um, an execution type thing is use that food to, to lure like I just showed you. Like, hey, okay, we're gonna heal. Using that food to, again, show the dog the exact behavior we want. I'm gonna take that food out, good heal, right? She's like, okay, I kinda understand this heal thing. And then I'm gonna lure the dog's head up. It's gonna go, yes, good sit. But after, two or three hours or two or three lessons, the food should go away and then come out periodically. But if you're still at level four, session four, session five, and this has nothing to do with any training she's prior done or anything that you guys have done foundationally, my job as an educator is to, you guys say, hey, this is the micro of, you, of what we're seeing is the barking. The macro or the bigger picture is the fact that she's not engaged with anything that I'm doing unless I have a stick of beef. Don't forget guys, we're doing a brand new giveaway with our No Bad Dogs merch. All you have to do to enter to win is simply leave a comment in the comments below three, within three hours after this video is published to enter to win and I will select somebody randomly to win some free swag. So I just wanna like give you my feedback of what I'm seeing is, is she really doesn't have a lot of leash awareness if you will. So if I go forward and I turn and go the other way and say, hey, let's go, let's go this way without that food drag or lure, she doesn't understand that. And so if you go out to the open and you see a squirrel or a car or something like that, I don't really know who's to blame. It's like, do we blame her because she's misbehaving, but does she really know what we're asking her to do, you know? Because again, if you're, if you're doing foundation heel, Good heel, good heel, good heel. Turn, good heel. We know that she can stay in that position, but as soon as I take the food away, you do it without the food more times than with the food. So use it, but don't depend on it. Same thing with the slip collar. Have it on, but don't depend on it. A lot, like a lot of what you're saying makes sense, and it's kind of reason why we're here. I, I guess what I was willing to try like work at this when we're at home and i think like the biggest thing for Leave us sit. that we want to work on is is like when we take her out for walks and like a car goes by and we like know she's gonna freak out like where we start with that you know what i mean mm -hmm. like, and you don't have to answer it now but i guess that's kind of what i want to take away from yeah and i think we have to develop these yeah exactly before we can even right take, take her for that right Right, exactly. So you have to take steps back. Because like I said, and, and, and I'll, I'm going to explain the significant difference between training versus reality. So like I said, um, training room, good, 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 whatever, whatever we want the dog to do. We have that food, it's there, it's good. We get the dog to do what we want. But what happens when we do this and then the dog can't do it? So you, you wanna have balance. It's much like great parenting. Leave it. 
in my opinion, right? So that was a perfect example. I put her into a sit with the food. She sat politely. She got rewarded with a little lick. She started whining and stuff, and I gave her a correction. So I just took that leash and I go, hey, knock it off. I like using the slip collar because I don't have to constantly, you know, poke the dog, grab the dog, get the dog's attention. You know, I don't, I don't have to do that. I can just snap my fingers like that, heel. So <clears throat> you want to have, to answer your question, you've never had, you've never had as directive consequences. So the harness that you came in with has limitations to the aversive correction that you can apply, as does the slip collar. Does that make sense? So if you say, pepper sit, and then if I take the food out, wherever it is, good. So I want to reverse, reverse that. Oh, somebody doesn't find this session as amusing as we do. We're halfway through it. I didn't want to cut out any of the meat and potatoes. I know it's a longer one. So we're going to do a little Tom's trivia right here in intermission halfway through. What breed would you guys be if you could be any breed? What would it be? Leave your answers below. You can just switch to a, a little micro prong collar, which is a little safer for her. So instead of just this, this, this one little point of pressure, it's gonna give you like 20 points of pressure. On the contrary of, of what this looks like, the actual prong collar itself, it, it's not, <laughs> It's not like, again, like if you don't know what it is, it kind of looks like a Chinese torture chamber. I understand that. Um, but it, it's, it's actually just a, a device that actually evenly distributes your correction better. So when you're pulling up on this little tab, it creates this little triangle in the back and it comes up together. So it's going whoop, whoop, like this instead of just one here. Off, off. So you see how it just takes that level of, right? Without a lot, it's just one little like quick. And the, like, again, the significant difference is, is I have 20 points of pressure versus one now. So when she comes up, I go, whoop, she goes, okay, sorry. <laughs> so same thing, my goal is, is to transfer this to when she reacts to dogs. I just flick my wrist, I go, nope. She goes, okay, and then she relaxes. So here we go, the aha moment. Another dog is coming into the room Keep in mind, Pepper has not been able to be in another room with another dog at any given time, at any given moment, at any part of any training. This is a big deal. Leave it. Heel. Leave it. Heel. Harley. Leave it. Harley. Uh-uh. Pepper, sit. Good. Okay. So there's another dog right in front of her. Historically, crazy. And you see what I did. I shut it down. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? So anyway, again, She's laying down because she's so like this. And I'm like, sit. She's like, I'm not sure what that is, but I'll come down here instead. So she's, she's, this is new to her. I mean, for a dog that she doesn't know to be directly in front of her and for her to like watch, she's still building a little bit, but she's not reactive. So now we can have our cake and eat it too. We're to say, yeah, she's a little reactive and she's kind of spunky with other dogs, but it doesn't matter because she's obedient right? Where before, and I'm basically taking three sessions and putting them into one frame so you can see what the outcome will be. Um, so you're getting that ex super explosive, you know, banging off at the end of the leash and she's powerful like that. So I came in and I go, hey, and I took that prong and I just snapped it a couple times. Correction, correction, correction. Those prongs came up, bang, bang, bang. Now, that's one of the more that's one of the safest corrections you can make because again, it's fully around the neck. It's not one spot. She's not, you know, ripping her head off and she's not choking. She goes, hey, that's that kind of, what do you, that's kind of uncomfortable. I said, look, every time that you completely lose it at another dog and make 
our lives, everybody in the rooms, lives more stressed, especially when they don't need to be. You get a passive dog that walks in and just sits on a crate or a cot and you start losing it, that's a big problem. We, we, have, we have big problems there because then the next thing is, is you guys are on the street, that's the road, dog's there, cars are here, you're paying, whoosh, boom, done. Because she thought she had to go react to a dog. Or she slips, the, she, she slips one of these, gets into a fight with A, a dog she really didn't want to fight because she's not really aggressive, and B, she gets into the wrong fight with the wrong dog and gets severely hurt or worse. So in my opinion, I would much rather apply four to five microsecond, like knock it off of uncomfortability instead of live a life through, gosh, you know, life would be so much better if I just didn't have a dog that reacted all the time to everything. Leave it. So now you see that kind of like, is it, is it fear? Sure. But there... I, I personally believe that when, and, and I know from experience with working with thousands of these types of cases, you, that fear is, is structure. That's, I think it's getting mistaken from structure versus fear. When I'm telling her, hey, knock it off, and she's like, I don't want to get in trouble, she's not fearing from me at all. Like, if I came this way, let's go. Oh, dear. Like, right? She's like, yeah, you're my buddy. She's not, that's bad fear. If you walk into a room and a dog pees themselves, that's bad. But if I say, hey, knock it off, and she goes, oops, sorry. That's good fear, that's structure fear. That's, that's fear used in a way that when your mom and dad used to look at you and you knew something was wrong before they said anything, that's good. That's your responsibility as a dog owner. Well, and she's so anxious, I think she, like, she, she needs, she structure right, she to right. She need, yeah, exactly, she needs that structure where she's like, guys, there's a dog, and you know, the helicopters are going over, we gotta go, we gotta go, there's dogs, we gotta go, let's figure this out, and I'm like, what are you talking about, <laughs> right? And, and then she's like, oh, yeah, I'm not dead. I still have all my limbs. And so, like I said before, the, the big missing piece for the majority of dog owners that have this type of reactivity, regardless if it's fear, reactiveness, or even excitement, is, is what I said before is, what are you doing about it? Ah, touch. So even there, I was able to give her a little warning to say, no, no, no. That wasn't because I've rewarded her a bunch of times. It's because she's gotten, oh, I don't want to get in trouble, right? It just makes the most sense. It's the same thing I'm instilling with her. I'm like, hey, knock it off. And I want her to go, oh, right? So that fear is actually a good thing. Yes. Good girl. Platz. Ah, good girl. Lakota, I see. Ah, good girl. Lakota, good touch. So the reason why she's downing, again, is because she, she feels safest and the most secure to either fight or flight when she's in a down. She can go or she can run. And so she's, she's going, okay, I'm just going to watch this dog then. So that's why she's doing that. I'm not letting her take the wheel, certainly not letting her take the wheel. So I'm, I'm controlling all of this, which is why this is possible. Yes. Good girl. Cool. She. That's a good girl. Kill. That's a good girl. What a good girl you are. So you get that, right? That's her going, oh, oh, okay, I'm okay. So she's just building, and it's totally natural for her to build. I'm not going to punish her for getting overstimulated because it doesn't necessarily tell me that it's a, it's a bad thing, okay? Good. Down. Good. So now, yes, good. She's looking at me. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Koda, I see. Good girl. Yes, good. Heel. Good, right? So the dog moved. She got up. I told, her, I told her to look back at me. She looked at me, and I rewarded her for that. So I'm just breaking down those thresholds and teaching her, like, hey, it's okay. Just in case she moved. Sit. Yes. Good girl. Good. 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 Good.
what I did is I created calmness in a situation that may be normally pretty stressful. Dog gets that close, we automatically go, right? So just creating that like, you know, but the good thing is, is, hey, we're fully capable of getting her okay around a dog she doesn't know, even if they do look the same. She's all right. Watch, 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 watch. Couché, couché. Good girl. Good girl. Shh. It's okay, Kim. That was good. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell. This will give you an opportunity to win a bunch of new free No Bad Dog stuff. Turning on that bell will notify you when I upload and all you have to do is leave a comment within three hours of this video publishing and you automatically get entered to win the No Bad Dogs merch. I'm Tom Davis. I will talk to you next time. Peace.